Hello, this is the this is part three of the Dolores Huerta pop art piece. And I've already created, used the paint bucket to paint the purple shirt and the pink sections on the megaphone. And I used the paintbrush to um, paint the fingernail. Um, you could, um, I'm going to try something. I'm going to see if I can change the color of this little section here by selecting the paint bucket and maybe changing it to purple. Let's see how easy it is in this. Oh, it is. It's pretty easy in here. I could change that to purple if I want to. So that's pretty easy. Um, maybe I like that better. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do in this section of the video is we're going to um, emulate or use as inspiration Barbara Carrasco's piece here and the streaks in Dolores Huerta's hair. Um, she put pink streaks here that match her lipstick and her shirt. So I think I'm going to go with purple streaks. I don't know. I'm torn. Maybe I want pink streaks. Hmm. Maybe. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with purple streaks in her hair. So, um, but I'm gonna take a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go down a little further and try. I'm gonna need to move this up so I can see the plus sign. So I can't quite see it. And I'm going to. I'm going to use, um, let's see if I double click that. Okay, good, because I couldn't I couldn't see the plus sign. So if I double clicked it, I got the box, which is what I needed, because I want a lighter purple, a slightly lighter purple here. There we go, because I think the darker purple is not going to show up very well in her black hair. Okay, so then I'm going to go to the marker, because I think I'll have more control with that. And then I'm going to enlarge her hair. And what I'm wanting to use the purple streaks for is like the highlights in the hair. So there's going to be a few highlights here, not as many up here inside the hat because it would be in shadow. So there might be a few streaks here and some streaks along the this part of the hair where there would obviously be more sunlight. So let's see, what size would that be? Um, that might work. A size 12? Uh, no, that's too big. Way too big. Way, way too big. So I'm going to control Z that and I'm going to bring the thickness of that down to a 4 and see if I like that better. Yes, I do like that better. And I'm going to bring that down to there. And I want this to get a little thicker, so I'm going to go over this line a little bit more here making that thicker like so and then I want it to get a little thinner and taper off so it get, goes from thicker in the middle to thinner as it disappears so I'm going to go like that and have it disappear um, nope that's not what I wanted okay so I'm going to bring it back to about a three and maybe put another streak there and maybe one here. And maybe a highlight there. No, I don't like that one. Mm, I don't think I like that one either. I'm going to put a streak here. And I'm just going to experiment with the streaks in the hair. And I'm going to continue to look back and forth at what Barbara Carrasco did in the Huerta portrait over on the left. Just to, you know, use a master artist as my inspiration to see what they've done, because that's how we learn. We, we look to master artists to see, you know, how, do, how are they doing it? We call them master artists for a reason. They, they know what they're doing. They've done it many, many times before us. And so we look to them for advice, for their skill, and we emulate them. 
So I'm going to stop the video so that you can, you know, have some time on your on at your own pace to put in the whatever color streaks you decided to put in her hair. And remember that you're not adding streaks for the sake of colorizing her hair, but you're adding streaks for the sake of putting highlights in the hair like Carrasco has done. So I've got the lavender uh, or light purple streaks in the hair to indicate where the sun is shining or the highlights. And now I feel like this piece is done. If you want to continue to explore the different um, tools in this, in this application, you can do that. When you're ready to save it, what you're going to do is you're going to go to Menu and you're going to save as. You want to save as and you want to save it as an image. If you want to save it as a Paint 3D project so that you can continue to work on it, you can save it in two versions. You can save it as the Paint 3D project and you can save it as the image file. I usually save it both ways so that I can um, continue to work on it so I save it as the PN, uh, Paint 3D project as a PNG, and then I go back and I save it again as an image, and that saves it as a JPEG. Oh no, it's saving it as a PNG as well. So that way I can um, use it in other applications. So if I want to put it in a Google Slides, or if I want to share it online, or in, in, in many other ways I can use it. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that, um, that project.